Good everyone, this is Damares Photography. Yeah, this is Damares Photography. And today I'm going to be teaching you full retouching tutorial. Yes, this is going to be a full retouching tutorial. But first of all, if you've not subscribed to this channel, if this is your first time on this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Please just click on the subscribe button right now. Yes, this is the only way you support me, guys. So just click on the subscribe button. Yeah, it's not hard. Yeah, thank you. So going on to the tutorial right now as you can see we have our image on a smart object so the next thing is to crop i would like to i always tell everyone before you crop your image make sure your image is a, is a smart object before you crop why so that your the quality of the image doesn't reduce after you've cropped your image so right now we have our image on a smart object so i'm just going to crop my image the way i like it so right now i have my image cropped so i'm just going to flatten flatten that so as you can see we have a lot of things we want to clean up from this image we need to clean up the background you see there are a lot of things in the background we don't want so we need to clean that up first so first things first i'm just going to click on ctrl j i'll click on ctrl j next i'll go to the properties panel here and then i'll click on select subject so i want photoshop to help me separate the image from the background make a selection of the subject in this image so but the thing is photoshop doesn't always um, make perfect selection so what you have to do after you've clicked on your select subject is for you to clean up that is perfect the selections photoshop has done so for for me i use the editing quick max tool to perfect um my selections it allows me to use the editing quick max tool allows me to use a brush to make selections to use the brush tool to make selections and since i work using the graphics tab it's easy for me to use a brush to make selections but if you have what better ways to make selections let's say your lasso tool your um what they call your object selection your quick um your quick selection you get if you have any um any better way to make selections then just use it to perfect your selections you get but for me i'm going to be using the editing quick marks tool i'm just going to click on it as you can see the places that are not selected are in red the image the subject that has been selected is what you see that doesn't have a color so it doesn't have the red color so what you do is make sure if you want to add to the red selections you use your brush to make sure your brush is on black you use it to add to the red selections if you want to clean up that is if you want to add to the main selections here you change to the white brush tool see i can just zoom in first of all I'll go back i'll click on that again as you can see around here the selection here is not good so i'm just going to click back pick my black brush tool and my black brush and then i'll just paint into it So I think I've made enough selection for my image. I think the selection I've made is okay. So what I just do is click on Ctrl J. So by doing that, I've been able to select the image from the background you get. So I'm just going to click on Ctrl and click on that layer again. Now I have that selection again. I'll go to the layer beneath it. I right click and then I'll go to my lasso tool. Right click and click on select inverse. So now I have a selection of just the background. Then I'll click on Ctrl J again. So as you can see right here, I have just a selection of the background. This is where we are going to be able to clean up our background. You get what I'm trying to say? This is where we can clean up our background. Normally, if I like, I could just go and just pick a solid color this would work for this image since we don't have the it is not a full portrait so we don't have the flow of the of the of the image so i could just pick a solid color and then just pick a color close to the that is something close to around that is the mid tones of the image i click on ok and i click on this you get so as you can see i have made a clean background another thing i can do to that clean background is add, add a textured layer but the thing with this is um it doesn't make it look natural if you look around here you see that i have some lights coming in this is the second light i used light coming around this hitting the image around this place it's coming from here so that's why you see this 
part of the background is lighter than this part of the background so if you like what i did like this you could just go with it uh, what you just do again is add the texture to so that you don't have bandings on your background after you've exported your image but for me what i'm going to do is first of all because this this technique i'm using i'm going to use right now is something you could also use for images especially when the image has the down layer you get so this particular solid color technique would not work for that that well there so what you do right now is i'm just going to take to make a selection of all those parts i want to clean up and get just made a selection of all those parts i want to clean up you get and i'm just going to click on i'm going to right click and click on content aware fill so I allow content aware to fill up all those parts of my background okay so you see content aware has cleaned up has filled up all those parts that needs to be filled up so i just need to click on okay okay so we have that done so we just right click and click on the select so right now you can see on this layer it's what it's the fill so what you do to that layer is you right click on it and click on create clipping marks right now it has clipped to the background layer then you match that clipping marks so next thing i'm going to do is normally i should just blow this background but another thing i could do is just add the color the what they call it. i could just add the color fill that is the solid color i could add the solid color click on it off it double click then make sure the solid color is the color around here just click on ok i have that this is the solid color but what i will do with the solid color now is reduce the fill and make the fill to be around around 30 you get so now we have a cleaner background and the lights are still looking the same another thing i will do here is i will just click on ctrl j on that background um what layer i'm going to blow out that um background a bit so i think okay i think it didn't work i wanted to uh -huh, okay it's, it's working around there what i tried to do is i'm having some spots on the background so i wanted to clean that up so i have that my background is clean so by adding this one just makes it a bit more cleaner so i'm just going to what i'm going to do is i'll clip these things to the main background layer i match that clip this one too then i match that so as you can see we have a cleaner background cleaner background and then the lights are still coming in to that background so you it's not looking artificial last but not the least i'll click on ctrl j and then i'm going to add texture to that background the reason why i do that is so that we don't have bandings after we've exported uh what they call our image so i'll just go to my filter I'll go to camera roll go to camera roll then i'll go to i'll go to effects then i'll give it a green i'll give the green of let's see 30 35 i'll give it a green of 35 okay so that's adding you see now i've added texture to this background and i click on okay so by doing that i make sure i've made sure that we will not have any form of banding after we've exported the image you get so i'm also going to clip that to the main background layer so now we have the background so last but not the least i'm going to zoom into my image and then use the patch to to clean up spots on the on the subject which i don't want so i'll just pick the, my patch tool see and just go through my image and try to clean up spots on my image i don't want so just make sure you just go to your image you will find out that you see some things you don't want in the image so you just have to just clean them up that's enough every other thing i can do that with frequent separation so for this i'm thinking it's more of a more of an issue with the skin of the model so yeah so i think every other thing i can do that with frequent separation so we have a before after before after so i'm just going to put that into one background layer 
into one group and name that background so now we have our background layer before after before after next what we are working on is frequency separation and to do that first things first i'm going to make a stamp layer to make a stamp layer you click on ctrl alt shift e you draw shift e what the sub stamp layer is is making margin is margin all all what you've done previously into one layer but not deleting the layers underneath it so this particular layer is a match of everything underneath it but the underneath layers have not been deleted so now i'll click on ctrl j now i'm naming the blue layer low and i'm naming the high layer high that the top layer high so this top layer will be my texture layer this below layer will be my color layer the texture layer is where we would be able to use is where we would be able to use to remove spots using the clone stamp tool and the low layer is where we'll be able to use to use we we'll use the mixer brush tool we we'll use the low layer to use the mix use the mixer brush tool by using the mixer brush tool on the low layer we'll be able to blend in the lights and shadows we'll be able to blend in the 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 um the the edges between lights and shadows you get be able to blend them in and make sure and get smoother transitions transitions for me what we do what we use fre um, frequency separation to do is to have frequency um, to give the image smoother transitions between the lights and shadows so i'm going to name that group fs so first things first i'm going to off the high layer go to the low layer zoom in my image zoom in my image and now go to filter go to noise then median so i like to use a median of from 8 to 14 from about 8 to 14 but then again i have to make sure that my image is not too blurred so i'm going to pick it first i'm going to pick it first so i want to make sure the image is blurred but the contours are still there the contours of the image i want the textures to be blurred but the contours are still there so i think i can still increase let me increase it to about 10 let's see Okay, so I think 10 is good. 10 is good for this image. I think let's just make it 11. But 10, 11, let's make that okay. And then click on okay. So we have that for the low layer. Then next we are going to the high layer. So we'll go to the high layer, we'll on that. Then we'll go to image, we'll go to apply image. Then change the layer to low, change the blend mode to subtract and make sure your path is at 100, your scale is at 2 and your offset is at 128. Then click on OK. Then you change the blend mode here to linear light. Change blend mode to linear light. Then that's good. So what you're going to do now is on the high layer, you pick your clone stamp tool and then you make sure your opacity is at 100 your flow is at 15 then you go through the image and see if there are that if there are spots you still want to clean up before you blend the image so first of all you just go through it and then just clean up okay so i think i'll just go to my frequency separation that i'll go to my low layer then pick my mixer brush tool so for my mixer brush tool you make sure you're on a clean brush make sure your weight is from 15 to 25 i like mine at 15 so your load is at 30 your mix is at 30 your flow is at 30 then i'm just going to be painting the transitions between lights to shadows like just go through it softly just paint in the transitions between lights to shadows just going softly get okay. so you don't want to spoil the contours of the face you get you don't want to spoil them you should know that true frequency separation you are able to also change the contours of of the of the of the subject you get so you have to carefully just paint them you get just remember that you're trying to blend in the transitions from lights to shadows so you'll be taking in lights 
and then you try to drag them a bit into the into the meeting points where the light and shadows meet you try to just drag them and make sure that transition is smooth you get So I think we're through with the frequency separation. Okay, last thing for the frequency separation, we're through with the skin, but want to clean, want to um, smooth in the, want to smooth in the clothes. So I'm also going to use the frequency separation, the low, the low layer to smooth in the clothes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lasso tool on the low layer, and I'm just going to like select all those rough parts of of the clothes. Make sure I'm on add so that I can just add them and do them at once. So now I think I've selected that. So what I'm going to do is go to filter, go to noise, go to median. So as you can see, I use 11 previously. I could just decide to just double it. As you can see, my clothes is sharper I and mean, it's cleaner. So I'm just going to have that. So right now, I think I've smoothed in the clothes so I'm just going to select that as you can see before after before after even the clothes are now smoother if you apply that lasso tool on the clothes and you feel that it's not smooth enough you could just go back before you added the Gaussian blow and then add it again you get but for me that's okay that's okay for the clothes doesn't need to be artificial so next is next i'm done with the frequency separation i've done the background cleanup done the frequency separation next thing i'm just going to apply a bit of dodge and bond it's a simple technique for me i don't really do much dodge and bond after i've done frequency separation so what i do is i go to layer i go to new go to layer i make sure the mode is soft light then I click on fill with soft light neutral color 50% gray. So what I do here is I just want to bring out the detail. I just work on the face and I try to bring out some details. I want to make them more prominent. So first things first, I'm going to off my frequency separation part layer. I'll on, uh, on the brush, I make sure my opacity is 100 and my flow is at 1%. So if you want to dodge you make sure your brush is white if you want to burn you make sure your brush is black so you just stop a bit in between right now i want to burn like i said i just want to make some parts more prominent so i'm going to burn i'm just going to burn this part of the eyebrow i just want it to catch more attention you get so that's what i'm just going to do for me and my dodge and burn is just a bit of a technique for me to just bring out some parts of um the of the, my subjects just to make them catch my attention same thing with the brow same thing with the brow here too so i'm going to go to the nose to around here i'm going to give it a bit of highlights around the middle of the nose and i'm going to keep on it around here too that highlight should come down more yes so i'm also going to burn it around here I'm going to burn it around here and here like that so i have that for the nose then also i mean to give this place some contour you get I'm going to give this place some contour this is also burning i'm burning here too can see uh, I'm bringing out that contour in the face I'm just make I don't want it to go outside the image I also want to do it around here 
not too much okay so next things first next i'm going to dodge around here i'm going to dodge around here just the middle of the lips you get then at the top of the lips i'm going to burn it like i said i'm just bringing out some contour i'm just bringing out some detail you get the middle here i also want to burn it so before after you can see what else okay my eyes i'm going to for the eyes i'm going to um i'm going to bring out some sort of detail in the eyes you get i'm going to bring bring out detail first of all to do that i'm going to dodge this part of the eyes you should know how the eyes is we have a black we have a, a light part and then we have the black inside so i'm just going to bring out that light part first going to bring it out so now these eyes will catch more attention to when someone is looking at the eyes you get this one i tend to do it a lot i like doing it a lot except if i have a full body portrait where i see that it won't really be able to catch attention but for head shots for half body shots i make sure i do this because it will be able to bring in more attention to the image you get so have that for my have that for my eyes and i'm also going to burn these parts just going to burn this part and burn this outside part so i do that for here too So this thing is quite technical you just have to use your initiative to know what you feel how you feel the eye should be you get and look at the angle of where the eyes is you just have to use your initiative to know how it's meant to be how everything is meant to align you get so i have that for Dodging, I'm going to burn the middle part. Also burn the outer part. Another thing I will do is I would like to just dodge these whites of my eyes a bit. Just a bit. Same thing here. Yeah? I'm going to dodge the whites of my eyes just a bit. So we have before, after, before after so that's all for me dodging and burning you get i'm going to off on my frequency separation as you can see before after before after so next thing i'm going to whiten the eyes of the, the i'm going to whiten my eyes and to do that i have an action panel which i usually use i'm going to drop that in the description below so you can download it if you don't have any action panel for whitening the eyes so i'm just going to click on that on this my action panel i'm just going to go to something is wrong let's go back 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 so we have this okay okay so something went wrong but then again just go to the action panel and click on that okay yeah something really went wrong now i know what went wrong <laughs> so just going to click on that and then i'm going to select this i still have my selection panel open yeah so that was all right wrong so i just click on this and on this whitening tool i like reducing on the photo filter i like reducing the fill to 70. if it's not white enough then i can increase it but most time i find out that 70 is enough so i'm just going to paint on the whites using my white brush I'll paint on the whites of the eyes so this is why i told you that sometimes most times for me um the whites is 70s is enough but sometimes you have some people that their eyes is quite dark you get like more reddish so you might want to increase it it depends on your discretion you get So use the blacks to paint out where you've overpainted 
you were painted you use the blacks to paint out uh you use the blacks to paint out where you've over painted so i think that's all for the skin retouching so i could decide to increase this to 90 or 80 let's see 80 first okay i think it is okay so that's all for skin retouching so i'm just going to put all this into one folder and then i'm just going to name that skin so this is all for skin retouching as you can see before after before after see the difference all we've done look at the difference we've made to this image so next thing next next thing i'm going to do is color grading and then to do that i'm just first i'm first of all i'm going to make a smart object i mean a uh, stamp layer remember i told you to make a stamp layer you click on ctrl alt shift e and then you've made a stamp layer so now i'm just going to go to um i'm going to go to filter and i'm going to go to camera roll i like using camera roll to do my color grading i use camera roll for all my color grading so next first things i'm going to go to calibration i work on the blues first i give it about a saturation of seven then i move i move the um hues to this side first and then i move it here to see what i like depending on you color grading is a feel it depends on you just you alone nobody can determine nobody determines how your color grading should go you're the only one that determines that depends on you there's no color grading that's that's bad except if you didn't use a good color theory you get so for me i love i i, I like it around here I like it around there so i'm just going to give it about seven yeah I'll do the same thing for my saturation i'll give it about seven two around here then for the reds i make sure i don't do too much for the reds because the reds you know it affects the skin a lot so if i do it too much it will affect it too much so i just give it a bit to get so that's all for that next thing i'm going to go to color grading yeah this is where the magic really really happens so for the shadows i'm going to bring it down a bit see the more you bring it down the more saturation you are applying to the image so i make sure i don't take it down a lot just a bit and then i just um i'm coming so i take it down a bit and then i just the colors you get so i'm just moving around here let's see around here is quite good for this image i like it i feel i like it around here so this is good for me so i'll do the same thing i'll go to my highlights and do the same thing but here i'm going to just you get move around like it around here for my highlights and i'm going to go to my mid tones do the same thing for the saturation but i'll just have to move around the colors as the use to know where i want my uh hues to be so for me i think i'm going to do this oh let's look about here for my highlights i think i'm around here for my highlights this is good for my highlights and for my hues i think around here is good for my hues yeah so this is that this is my mid tones for the hues so as you can see before after before after not done with color grading first of all i'm just going to give it a bit of sharpening sharpening of 20 i think that's enough for the sharpening now go to the curves i'll make three dots normally you could apply the curves you could work on just the reds the greens the blues but I like working on the rgb this is the rgb affects everything and i just give it three dots here yeah? if you like you don't do this but for me i like it gives it a sort of feel when you learn how to work with the curves it gives my images a sort of feel i could play with the curves like this again i could just play with the curves there are different ways to play with the curves you get there are different ways to play with the curves so if you want something more dramatic you could do quite a lot of things with the curves you get you could do quite a lot of things but for me i'm just going to give it just give this kind of i love this sort of uh i love this sort of stuff on my i love the effect this gives when i move it a bit upwards like this i love the effect it gives on the overall image so i give it just a bit and i check out if i want to darken it a bit here yeah? take this one down a bit it's working for me i like that okay not too much but just a bit then i take this one up a bit and see don't really want that 
there's some upbeat too don't really want that so i think that's all for my color grading and i think you could do you could also work with here these are different things you could do you get you could use it to change the overall feel of your image you get but i'm not working on that for today so i think i have that for my color grading next thing you can save you can save your color grading um sort of this color grading settings let's say if you have other images you shot with the same outfit for the same person instead of you doing the color grading all over again you could just click on save and then save this color grading save it wherever you want to save it and then click on save so anytime you want to when you're editing other images for the same outfit for the same person you could just come here let's click on so this is my image the default setting i've saved my color grading so what i can do right now is just go to these three dots here and click on load and i'll go to where i saved my color grading so i'll come here this is where i saved my color grading preset i just click on it and click on ok and then as you can see i've applied the color grading then i just click on ok so i don't need to go and I don't need to go all over to make the color grading. I don't need to up, um, create the color grading all over. I don't need to do color grading every time. So once, right now, as you can see, I have three, two more images I've not edited from the same image. I could just, when after the frequency separation, I could just apply the color grading to it. This saves more time. So right now, I've done the color grading. Next thing, I want to separate the image from the background a bit. So I'm just going to make a selection of my subjects make a selection of my subject and then i'll use that selection to I'll apply the levels so i have the levels that is applied on just the subject and i'll just increase the beat the middle part i increase the beat brighten it up and i'll go here i also give it a bit of darkening here to i brighten up the beat yeah that's okay for me before after before after so by doing that i've separated the image from the background a bit so i'm going to make a create another stamp layer yes yeah, so on this stamp layer i want to sharpen the image so i'll go to filter i'll go to order i'll go to high pass and i make sure the the radius is about 1.2 to 2 i like 1.5 i leave mine around 1.5 so I click on OK and I change the blend mode to soft light. You could use soft light, vivid light or linear light. But I like soft light. It doesn't leave any, any, um, it doesn't leave any evidence that I've added something to my image. So right now I just leave it on soft light. So this is my image after sharpening. So the next thing I'm just going to brightening. I'm going to brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to give my image a bit of brightening. Just look at it and then just just play with it then yeah use your discretion to you get for me this is dramatic this is dramatic but this is not what i'm going for this image so i think this is enough for me so i have before after so you see before after before after so if you like this tutorial if you enjoy this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe yes don't forget to subscribe i'm on my knees i'm begging please don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next tutorial guys have a wonderful day